Blah. Y'all already know what it is. Your boy, Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality. The whole is podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to have from your drama or maybe have from your baby mama. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, fans, thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have a very, very special guest who's one of the best actors I know. And y'all not going to believe this. This guy is the dopest person ever. Give it up for Steve Delgado. What's up, brother? How you doing? Yeah, hey, what's going on? I'm chilling, man. It's a good time to be here. It's nighttime, man. But uh, nine times is where it's at. So uh, we're good. We're good here. There you go, man. I like that. I like that. So real quick, y'all, for those who don't know, um, I want to share, I always share a little quick story and I'm all about stories. So last week, my mom came to visit me for the first time after, you know, living in Vegas for a year. And I was like, mom, you know what? Let's go to Cali. So we went to Cali. I haven't been to Cali since 2015. That's a long time. And I was like, come on, mom, let's go. Let's have a good time. And uh, first thing first, I was like, mom, we got to go to Universal Studios. And she's like, what? I'm like, we have to, mom. Like, it's been my dream. You took me to Disney World when I was a kid. I only remember maybe like 20% of what happened. But I think it's time we go to Universal. So I call my aunt. And luckily, my aunt lives in Cali. For those who don't know, I'm going to tell y'all a secret. But pretty much, you get a big, big discount if you put a Cali address when you buy universal tickets, it comes out cheaper than the original price. Instead of paying the $124, you pay only $99. Dang! So if y'all trying to do a trip, don't forget my little tip. So we go there. It's my mom, my pops, you know, my brothers. They all come in. We're ready to have a good time, you know. And the uh, crazy thing is we get to the place like 9 in the morning and they didn't want to let my brother come in. I'm like, yo. And it was a big problem because everybody came in. Now, I understand when you invite your whole family. I invited like 12 of my family members. And one of them did not get in. It's so messed up. He's the tallest one, too, from the group. Probably 6'3". And we're like, man, we're going to have a good time, you know. He gets through. And guess what happens? Lady goes, your card does not access. And it's like a little barcode where they scan it. And she's like, Doop. it does not go through. I'm sorry. We can't let you in. So he tried sneaking another lady to help him get in. And she gave me the same problem. I said, like, oh, man, I could tell this problem right now. And understand this. We already bought all the tickets. Okay. So I'm like, thank goodness. So I came in, you know, trying to put my butt in tight. <laughs> And I said, look, lady, I ain't going to play games with you. I play. I pay so much money. I think you let us get in. She's like, I don't think so because the, the barcode looks fake. I'm like, girl, it's the same thing that we all got. So I show her the original receipt, right? I'm a beast. I always screenshot. So I'm like, look, girl, I got it. She's like, she's his email. I'll let, you, I'll let him slide. Damn, girl, you really trying to play games. Eventually, we were able to get in. But it was a crazy thing because it kind of sucked because he is one of the youngest from the group. So for him to not get in, it, it was just kind of sad. But to be honest with y'all, Universal Studios, being there at the first time, I can see why I'm glad I waited. Because all the rides were definitely, you had to be like five, four, a little bigger. They didn't let no little kids in all the rides. And... <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm going to ask you real quick, brother. Have you been to Universal Studios? I've never been to Universal Studios. What? What? <laughs> brother, you got to go, man. You got to go. Is the heaven is the heaven of movies. So there's a little tour bus that they take you on. And basically, it gives you where all the big movies are being filmed. Um, fast it's like all the big ones and they show you where they film it and even like the old school movies too like my big fat liar uh back to the future they show you the original car like it's so cool and i was like man this is so cool i like i feel like i'm in hollywood you know what i'm saying gave me a little glimpse and i'm gonna be honest 
from all the rise, I'm going to break it down real quick. Jurassic World. If you love T-Rex, you like to get scared, that one for me is the best, right? Because you not only get wet, but uh, <laughs> you see all these T-Rex. I almost thought my head was going to get chopped off because I had two trying to attack me. So the force was strong. The second one, I got to say the most scariest uh, ride, actually, man, my mama cried. The Mummy Revenge or Revenge of the Mummy. That ride is so crazy because you're going, <laughs> you get there, man, you're going crazy, going fast, and you're like, yeah. And then crazy part in the middle of the ride, it stops for like 15 minutes, and you're like hanging, like almost like you're falling down. They tell you, sorry for the delay, but our <laughs> our ride has just stopped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all they say. And I'm terrified because the lights are black. Next, you know, they actually put us backwards. So your riding goes backwards at the middle of the whole thing. For me, that was pretty scary. My mom, for the first time I saw her crying, she said, I'm never going to go ride this roller coaster again. It was too scary. So for those who are trying to uh, be brave, do the mummy first and then Jurassic World. But uh, that's all I wanted to share. But wait, wait, wait. There's one little part I forgot. What happened to me, Universal Studios? I forgot. I forgot the cream with the pie. So I'm walking with my family. You're not going to believe this. I see a famous YouTuber, one of the highest YouTubers and TikTok stars of all time. They consider him a legend. I want to say he's a legend because he's still alive, but he is one of the oldest YouTubers of all time and he's still making money. Uh, Justin. Alexander. I don't know if you remember him. He did like YouTube pranks with his wife. So I actually saw him. I was like, oh, snap. I think I see my brother. And he turned around. And I said, like, hey, yo, <laughs> Alexander. I forgot which name I said first. I was like, you don't mind take a picture with you? He goes, yeah, sure. So I took a picture with him, my cousin. I posed. And uh, you're not going to believe this. He, uh, after the whole thing, I said, hey, brother, you want me to get you a beer? Because, I mean, you did me that favor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you let me take a picture. Let me get you some Modelos, right? And he goes, no, nah, man, I can't. You know, I uh, I got, uh, I'm sober right now. I got, you know, I got my family. I got my kids. So, you know, I'm trying to take it easy. And I respect that. I was like, man, I, I respect that you're going to put family first, you know. And uh, I like that you have control. When you don't want to drink and you don't have to, that's control. So I respect that. But anyways, fans, back to the main topic of today, the bad actor. Uh, give it up for Steve Delgado. Yo, yo. <laughs> so, <laughs> so real quick, fam, I want to ask so my fans get to know you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your background, what neighborhood you grew up in, um and your hobbies you know you can start whatever but we want to know a little bit about you wow uh <laughs> so uh I, I was born in la raised in vegas uh born in because specifically born in south central la and then moved out here i've always been raised in the uh in the central part of vegas uh either like um, a lot of people probably don't know streets of Vegas, but, you know, Charleston and Bruce area to, uh, you know, near near downtown to uh, like maybe five minutes um, by the strip, like Sahara and Sixth Street. So like, you know, places around there, you know, um, but I always been around central. I don't claim east, west, south, north. None of that. Uh, I'm, I'm a central. I'm a central boy. So um, um a lot of people won't consider Central as a thing because there's no such thing, but there is a thing. I I, I claim it. So, um, and then uh, so that, yeah, that's my hood. Um, and then like uh, yeah, I went to you know school out here and stuff like that, which has you know been wonderful. Um, I graduated from a charter school, but uh, you know I went to I went to Desert Pines High School um, in part of my high school career. Um, so there's that. Uh, my hobbies, uh, I love dancing. 
salsa, merengue, bachata. You know, I saw you a couple weeks ago there, you know, gave me love and it was just pretty tight. Um, you know, I was, I had, it's funny, I had an audition the next day and I was like, it was one, one night I was, I was feeling it. I just wanted to go out and dance and, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty popping over there. You know, I had rhythms, um, to, to dance and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, I also love, I mean, I'm very spontaneous, man. I, I, I love doing a lot of things. I really don't live with myself because if you live with yourself, it really, you have no fun. You really needed to have fun in everything you do, you know, uh, hiking, traveling, what, what, whatever, whatever comes, man. I'm always down to do, I'm always down for everything except, you know, uh, skydiving. I, I can't, I can't do that. I'll, I'll be, I'll be such a, I don't know if I can curse on here, but, uh, it'll, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be a horrible feeling. So, um, but yeah, I, I I just really love to do everything. I, I'm I'm also a nature kind of guy. I love nature. I, I I mean, I'll hike. I'll hike if I if I have like a free off day. Like, I'll just go hike, man. I'll go hike and just see what some wildlife. You know, I, I I I like the nature more than I do the nightlife. The nightlife is cool and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I've had my taste, but the nature is like you know more inspiration. And the more inspiration I have, the the better because it's like. I know what to I know what to breathe in, uh, to take in with my career, and uh, you know, as a regular person, you these memories are always important because these these memories you can never get back. And uh, I always said, you know, to the people like, either you could be a memory or or, or a real thing. I, I've always been a real thing um, because, like, if you're a memory, then it's like, damn, it's like because you'll be one of those people, like, oh, what what happened to where are they now type stuff. And I'm not that type of guy. I'd be like, Oh, where is Steve now? You know, you, nobody should have that question because if anything, I'm always around. Um, I'm not here. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in uh, LA and stuff. I go back and forth between here and LA and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that, that's, that's about it. That's yeah. I'm like, it's a very small change and stuff. So yeah, that's about it. And, and quick question, Steve. I, one thing I always wanted to know, man, because I, you know, I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? So, are you? I know you Latino. That's for straight up, because your last name too. Yeah. What's your background? Uh, I'm Venezuelan. Oh snap! Okay, all right, all right. You actually my first one for, in this podcast from you know <laughs> from Venezuela. So what's up, brother? So, real quick, man, you got any good memories you could think of? Have you been there before? The I have. Last time, I, last time I was there was back in 06. Oh, snap. You got any, like, um, like interesting stories you, you, you could remember over there? I got a couple. Um, man, this is when I was 12 years old. No, 11. I was 11, and uh, I remember I'm going back there. I haven't seen my family and the rest of my family. God knows how long I'm there. I remember uh, I see my cousin, and we're, like, hugging each other so tight because, like, we haven't seen each other since, like, we're, like, little kids. You know, I would – when I was younger, because, like, I, I would – going to Venezuela was, like – we would go, like, every so often. We were, like – when I was, like, five, six or some shit or something like that. And then, you know, just hanging out with them. And I think my, my, my tia got, I guess she got a vow renewed. Uh, it was a good time. I go in the streets of Venezuela. It was because uh, uh, my family lives in Caracas, which is the capital. And uh, we're going in the streets. You know, it was fun. Um, my, 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 my abuelo lives in, uh, lives like in the, on a hill or something like that. So it's just like we see other other kids in the village, we just play and stuff like that. And there was like this guy across the street, which I remember so much. He remembered me for all these years. And I would always ask him for, 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 uh, for a bottle of Matagoya, which is, which is a Puerto Rican drink. It's very popular over there in Venezuela too. And, uh, um, we just, uh, he just gave me that and we just have fun, man. I, I remember I screwed up my, my knee. Cause I tried to like, I jumped off of a, of a, of a wall and I landed on my knee, and I was like, "Ah, God, that hurt!" But I wasn't broken or nothing. So, um, so there, there's that. Um, 
Uh, then we stayed there for a week. I don't know, but that week went by quick, man. I, I, I it was so fun. It was really fun being over there. I'm, I miss, I'm, obviously I miss them. It's a bad situation right now over there, but you know, I, I, I would love to, you know, go, but obviously I would love to be back, go back and stuff like that. Not with my mom. I'd rather go by myself, go but nah, I would say by myself, but me with some people and, you know, you know, have some, have some fun and stuff like that. So. Um, I mean, I, I try to tell them, listen, why don't you come? Why don't you move to the United States or, or move to or move to Puerto Rico? You know, because Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, so why not? You know, but uh, now nah, they just they just love living there, and you know, I can't force them to do what they want to do. But uh, you know, Venezuela was fun, man. Back 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 then, it was really fun. Uh, I yeah, I, I don't know the streets, but it was really fun. It was really fun. That's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Now, for those who don't know, guys, um, Steve actually knows one of my guest stars I had a couple of weeks ago, Asusena. And I want to know, my man, my brother, uh, how did you guys like bump into each other or how did you guys end up in the same world? That's like what I'm trying to figure out. You know what I'm saying? Um, because if it wasn't for her, I'm going to be honest, she did tell me I should get you on. I would never, um, we would never had this. So, you know, I want to thank her. I know she can be watching this. But brother, tell us how, how did you guys met? <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to her. Uh, <laughs> um, to be honest, I, I I don't remember how we, I don't remember where exactly we met. I just know, I just know she hated my guts. She hated me For because me. she hated me. Like I I I don't remember where we met. I know. I remember we met a couple times, and then we were we we were both on set on a, on a, on a, on a on a Carol G project, like a commercial, and so that's where I like okay, I, I speak to her more. But I knew before like she hated my guts, and she thought like I was like too cocky and stuff like that, <laughs> and. Uh, I I don't I don't know what led I don't know what led to what but it's like um after I don't know I think it was like maybe 2019 2019 we we got we got we got to know each other we got closer much closer now we'll do my self tapes at her house at her house and you know we would be on set a few times together um we we would just help each other out and uh you know, uh, that, that we created the bond and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, I you know, I support her and everything too, she does. And, you know, as part as part of, as, as, you know, aside from the actual stuff as a friend, you know, she, she's, 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 she's really good people. And, um, uh, man, uh, there's so many, so many memories, so many memories with that girl. The last time I saw her was the time I saw you at, at the dance studio. And I was talking to her a couple of days ago, um, you know, because she was doing some wildlife stuff in Salt Lake City, which I'm very happy for her because, you know, she's she always she's starting to believe in that. And um, yeah, um, man. Yeah, there's so much memories with that girl. Uh, I, I love her to death. Uh <laughs> Man, but yeah, that's the first. The, the I just, like I said, I just don't know where. If I can, if I, if I can remember it, I'll come back to you with that. If like where we met, but I even even I, some people would ask me where did we meet. I I really can't tell. I like I just can't say because I just don't know where I met her. I I think I met her at a mixer. I don't know, but she hated my guts. That's what I remember the most. She hated my guts. Wow, man, that's crazy. Cause you know, like when i asked her about you right when she was sharing the story how she won her award like she's she made it sound like you guys were best friends i'm like damn that's what's up and then i had no idea she, you know that part that she thought you were real cocky so i mean yeah man you i mean that's good you're making progress brother you're making progress you know <laughs> you're getting better you're getting better you're not cocky no more you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no that's good man that's really good man she seemed like a really nice person i when I met her, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, was also in the social dance event, uh, probably like maybe six or eight months ago. So I feel like 
you know, she's really good people. Like I, I could tell she has a good heart, very humble. It's very hard to find, you know, people that are very humble. And uh, no, that's great, brother. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, brother, uh, speaking of acting, how did you know you wanted to get into acting? When like, I was in, go on. No, no, uh, I was just going to add, brother, um, uh, and also while you answer that, uh, who, who are your inspirations? <laughs> I had to add a little cherry. You know what I'm saying? The cherry yeah. came out. Uh, how I, I, well, it all started like, uh, well, I never had an age I wanted to do it. I just always knew I could do it, but I just never really realized it to my senior year in high school that, man, it was like, what can I do for the rest of my life that I don't have to worry about retirement and just do it for the rest of my life. Even when I'm like 120 years old or something like that. And, uh, acting came up immediately. Um, I, I'm originally want to be a basketball player, but I'm like, like, damn, I'm not, I don't think I'm grow. I'm five eleven, And I'm like, damn, I'm not going to, I'll hopefully I can go to six, but I don't think I'm going to go to six. Um, so all right, so by then I fell out of love with basketball, ex-girlfriend drama. Uh, it was just a horrible time. Um, I mean, a great year, but, I mean, it was, it, it was an up-and-down year. But, I mean, I made the best of what I had. But I just, like, you know, decided to pursue acting. I knew, like, over the summer I knew how to do this research on what I wanted to do. And then coming out of summer, um, try to get into acting classes. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and that worked. Um uh, I, I, I was salutatorian on my class, um, and I, in my speech, I, I told him that what's next for me. I told him, well, what's next? Well, I'm going to be an actor, and uh, you'll probably see me in the next Fast and Furious 69 or some shit like that. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody laughed. And like they laugh like that at, the, at that joke. But, you know, the, the, the point of me saying what I'm going to do and sticking to it and never looking back. Like that, that's that's impressive. That's impressive by me. Um, you know, I uh I mean I always I like for me, I knew even from like when I was young too, I, like I always knew I had that it factor. Um I knew that some there's just something about me um that I, I know that I, I have that, you know, it's very rare to have someone that can get, you know. I'm always I always have that confidence. I always take myself over anybody because you know i i, I work my ass off and you know, I, I i just uh i, I just really i want it so bad man and if i'm if i put some that my mind into it i'm very passionate about i you, like no one can take that away from me um so um from that point um september of 2013 our first acting class which was and it, it was good till december and then i met like you know incredible people um, that it had to help me that start me on my journey and you know it was a, it was a great benefit like i said and meeting a caster a casting director which by the way a casting director that i performed of a few months ago no it was like mm, december december of 2020 uh he i uh, he was in a workshop and i happened to be in the workshop and i performed in front of him and i i was like his name was jeffrey he was like hey jeffrey i don't know if you remember but uh uh my name uh, um but uh, you were there back at the school, BIH, um, and then you helped us with our scenes and stuff like that. And, and you know, and uh, he was like, yeah, I do remember you. I do remember that. You know, it's great. It's great to see you, man, and stuff like that. So just to have that connection and, and it, it meant a lot to me because it's like it shows how, how far I got. Um, and, and I didn't come this I didn't come so far to just come so far. And there's just. There's so much levels to this. And uh, um, so, yeah, that's that's that, that's what it was. And then, you know, uh, trying to I mean, my first film was a first film was like at 18 years old. Um, trying to, you know, just get better. This is what I want to do. Get better, get better, get better. And I'm trying to, like, adjust the job and the acting. I'm like, oh, man. But then I finally had like I had to figure out how I was going to make work and then finally i made it work and then you know doing it consistently that's 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 what i wanted doing consistently because if you're inconsistent you ain't gonna get anywhere and uh, i hold myself to be very consistent and you know i attract consistency and 
I gravitate towards more people who are consistent because you know it like it, it's it makes it makes the the world around you better you know so because i'm on my grind you're on your grind too let's be on our grind together we uplift each other no no setbacks no nothing um because there's only one rule you it's either step up or step aside and i'm not i'm not gonna be with the people if, if they're too scared well they step aside because i'm stepping up you know you can't be scared you have to you know you miss 100 100 percent of shots you don't take so um, you know, just just little by little, time time by time, day after day, just trying to get better with the craft. Um, you know, and uh, I got my first agent at 18, which was incredible. Ooh. Yeah, it was incredible. I, I thought I was really happy, but I was like that. In that point, that told me like I made the right choice. This is it. This is this is it. Yeah, I, then I knew that I made the right choice. Um, and I love it. I, I love it because there's so much to this thing and trying to study, trying to learn from people, learn from the greats. You know, I don't have a favorite actor because it's like everybody's just too damn good. You know, um, I, I just, I, you know, just respecting the art of it. I you know I, I, I'm not, I'm never be, I'll never be that guy. To me, there's no such thing as the greatest of all time in acting because there's just too many people that just came before dead or alive. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, 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 it's just, it'll be crazy me to think it like someone was the greatest of all time. Um, I, I, like I said, I just don't think, I, I don't just think there's such thing, you know, um, inspirations, uh, well, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino's right up there. Um, Ooh, I, me I, too, I brother. Love, me too, brother. Me love, too. Love, love, love both of them. Um, Will Smith third one um oh, let's see who who else george clooney um his 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 smoothness is so incredible you know having been so smooth like that what i aspire to be well but you know i i mean i'm i mean people say i'm smooth already but just his smoothness is i i just love it i just love his his smooth touch um Let's see. Um, uh, what else? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I like I said, I've, I've been for all the actors. L L DiCaprio. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a fan. I'm always a, I've always been a fan. Um, Johnny Depp. The, the way he he's different, plays different kind of roles. He's a he's a little chameleon, and I, I that's what I aspire to be a chameleon because. Not only like well, I could be a thug, but I can play a, a, a Jewish guy to someone, um, hell, someone, uh, a young priest or something like that. Um, you know, just those kind of things and just being very different. And uh, I, I really admire that. Um, yeah, those 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 people are like, you know. It's in, in, like right there, inspirations and like who I, who I watch a lot. But there's other people I watch too, like Anthony Hopkins, you know, his stuff like the British people, um, the British actors that they have uh, compared to the American actors. You know, I want to gaze inspiration from everything because it's like I, this, this game acting is, is so tough. And there's so much that goes into it. And um, for me, just to try to gaze and express by watching these people, watching film, knowing what they do, knowing what they're not doing. And, and just to help me in class every week or doing training two or three times a week, just to, just to build it up. Um, you know, I, it's just incredible just to uh, see where the progress is going to. And um, yeah. Um, just, just trying to get better with this crap. That's why I'm like, I'm never satisfied. I'm never, I'm not going to be proud of a little achievement. You know, there, I, I think, I think big, I think I'm a big picture kind of guy and uh, you know, it's cool. The success is cool and all, but you know, there's always more bigger fish to fry and that's what I aim for is the bigger fish. So um, I don't try to look ahead. I just try to look what's in front of me and uh, you know, um, it, it, being in the moment, being, Right now in the present, it uh, helps me with, you know, uh, the craft and just to really own it 
and so I can master it. But then again, I'm never, I'm never going to say like, oh, I mastered acting because there's so much, there's so much levels. And until I, until I know I'm at the top, top, top of the top level, I'm, I'm going to still work even at eight, like at 85 years old, I'm going to still work, you know, because this is, this means much to me and know where I started to know how it's going and stuff. It's just incredible. That journey, enjoy the, enjoy the journey more than the destination because the journey is like, there's so much beauty to the journey. So. I hear you feel that's, that's really good, man. I was going to tell you, so um, speaking of acting, when I was young, like in college, right? One of my one of the things that I could remember my professor was saying is make sure you have at least four monologues you memorize. Something comedy, something like uh emotional, like either you're upset, a sad um yeah, like a sad piece. Yeah. The third one is like more of a, a serious. So you gotta have different so they don't take you as um at one and one only do one role you feel what i'm saying yeah, yeah you gotta you know show like you said like a chameleon you gotta be able to adapt and show like hey i'm the real deal you feel me <laughs> you know what i'm saying you need me you know what i'm saying even though you got so many people doing the same thing but just in a different style you gotta stand out you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and uh i'm not gonna lie to you when I was in college, so for me, it was stand-up. I wanted to do stand-up. That was my big thing. All acting, because it's very similar, um, because when you tell the story, you kind of exaggerate, you know, the story to get people to laugh. So yeah. my professor was like, look, I got two big directors coming in. It was one big company in Chicago called Red Moon Company, and the CEO was coming to our school in our classroom and my professor told me i want you to do your monologue in front of them because this is your moment to shine if they like you they'll pick you out and you probably get like a role for so i'm like cool let's make it happen so before the date she came the ceo i literally was like practicing every day had my professor look at my piece he's like all right i think you're ready so I got rejected. I ain't gonna lie. I did the thing. I did my piece. And she was all right. Great job. Great job. But I ain't get picked. So I was like, dang. So next week, my professor's like, I got somebody else coming in another company. It's uh, I can't get the name right now, but it's, it's coming next week. I want you to come do a different piece. You got this. All right, cool. And he helped me out with my, my resume too, you know, because it's different from when you do a resume for a job, you have your, all the stuff that you perform, you know, like it's a, it's, it's a different resume, but it's your, your scenes that you did, the, the movies you did and stuff like that. And so he helped me out. Right. Cause I'm like, all right, cool. Let's try the theater company. Let's try something else. Right. Let's, let's go a different route. And um, I got there I got rejected. I was like, dang, man, ain't no, what's going on? And <laughs> and crazy thing happened. My my professor, a uh, couple years later, I already graduated, right? Like, hey, look, I got this new play coming out, and I'm missing one actor, and I want you to do it. I'm like, for real? He said, like, yeah, I want you to do it because you got talent. I, I I already know how I can use you. I just need you. Are you down? I, I got two roles that you can play. I'm like, for real? You, you serious? I was the happiest kid on the block, man. I, like, jumped so high. I'm like, thank you, professor. I appreciate it. And he was going to be my director. So, and, and most of the people in the cast were very professional. I, like... Some of them were in a lot of very famous commercials. And um, some people I didn't know. I was like, man, these guys, I could tell they're the real deal. Like, I'm like, this is actually my like first, first professional play in Chicago. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like the only one who's not like a pro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I get there and it's crazy because the two roles I play is one, I play a smoking pot security guard. So I was like, man, I, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. I never smoke weed. 
<laughs> see so i said how am i supposed to do this so i started watching friday i started watching snoop dog i was watching everybody that smoked weed and i was like let me try to mimic you know i don't even know how to hold a cigarette that's how bad it was and i was like man you know what and i told my uh the director right his name was jim blair i said jim blair I know the lines already but i'm i want to ask you if i can improv it I want to get permission because I want to. This is your project. This is your play. You wrote it and you're gonna you direct it. I, I want to make sure we're cool. He's like, let me see what you got. And so I was like, oh step. First scene I came in. Woo I'm back. And I was just like, I forgot. I started going with it, right? And I guess I was supposed to catch the guy, or one of the students was trying to run away from the school but i was so high i couldn't even chase him but i like i improv it and you're not gonna believe this brother at this play it was called at the filament theater in chicago uh by portage park you're not gonna believe this when my scene came in and i'm not gonna lie i was the only hispanic there everybody was white i'm be honest i was the only latino there the whole crowd cheered and laughed at my scene <laughs> I said, oh, snap. After the showcase, Hector gave me a hug. He said, Man, I love this. I, you know, David, I'm so glad you did this improv. It, fit, it fits perfect. This is what I was missing. He, 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 after the show, the audience will come to me, right? They're like, I love your scene. I got to be honest, your scene was probably my favorite part. That's what they told me. I was like, man, for real? I said, it's a pleasure. I had my mom come. She didn't believe me. Like, mom, look, I'm trying to, I'm always trying to make it big. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to make it bigger than Steve, but I'm going to make it, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm trying to make it big. You know what I'm saying? So my mom's like, cool. She loved it. She, she was very encouraging. And this definitely gave me a lot of confidence that I felt like I needed. And um, one thing too is, I feel like when you work with a nice, cohesive group, you feel like you want to push yourself more and get better and better along the way. way. You're always getting better at your craft, right? Because we had to perform it like five or four days within the week, and we did it for three months straight. So that's a lot of times, man. I'm like, dang, new crowd, new crowd every week. You know what I'm saying? And... Honestly, man, like, you know, I'm proud of you, brother, for, you know, continue to doing acting, you know, keep doing it. I think it's nice to see Latinos like us who are um, inspiring because this after watching this, a lot of young people, even my fans, when they see this, they're going to be like, man, if Steve could do it, I could do it, too. You know, I'm not the only brown person in the block. You know, I can. You know what I'm saying? And for those out there, I recommend to watch In the Heights. I think it's great to have a uh, predominantly Hispanic cast. And uh, I, I'm going to be honest with that film. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts, Susie. But in this film, In the Heights, are you not going to believe this? I had a vision when I was young in college. I was like, I want to make a movie about bachata. That was the big thing. Right. I was like, I, I want to incorporate that because we have uh, that movie, um, that old school movie. I'm trying to remember. I know what you're talking about. What I'm talking about, brother. I know what you're talking about. Oh, what's it called, man? And it's like, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a bunch of Hispanics and then you got a bunch of white people and they kind of show off their dance. They're going to come. You say it, I'll, I'll say yeah, but I, I know <laughs> I know the movie you're talking about. It was made in the 90s. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't yeah. get it. Can't, can't get, it. get it. It'll come back. It'll come back. But I had that vision, and my one of my cousins, he always told me this. When you think of an idea, somebody's thinking that same idea, but it depends on the person who's going to make it happen first. I agree with him 100% because in the Heights... They have everything in Spanish, Latino music. And I was like, dang, I never did it. I never uh, recorded. But one thing I can give, I can give myself credit. 
um i don't know if you saw my interview with asusana last last episode a couple episodes ago but i i started one of the first youtube sitcoms in chicago and one of my episodes there's a scene where me my character Yako is funny because my in my stage name in, in this podcast called Yako. She's a beautiful Puerto Rican girl at the club. And the first thing I do, I say, I ask her to dance and we dance bachata. And it was one of the most beautiful scenes in the entire show because we have the strobe lights. She's looking fresh. I'm looking I'm looking French toast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I'm trying to be uh, Rico Suave, you know, do the show, the lean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and we were just bringing it down, you know, pop, 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 pop. And it was so nice, man. One of the best uh, best videos I've ever done. And uh, But, yeah, going back to you, brother, what do you think about In the Heights, man? What, what's, uh, what came up in your head? I'll be honest, I haven't even seen it. I haven't heard of it, right? Uh, huh? You heard of it, right? I know, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but yeah, I, okay. yeah, I know, I, I know, I just haven't, I just haven't seen it. Trust me, June has been, it just June was a hectic month on a good, in a good way, but I haven't, I haven't seen it. it, it, it the hell, I, I barely saw Fast Nine last week, so it's like, and that was last week because I had like, you know, a, a little time on my hands to to go, but no, I haven't seen the Heights. But it's interesting you mentioned about. Like a, a movie kind of that's in bachata or some uh, or in the in, in regards, I had an idea too about that and about writing something like that. I'm not gonna say a name. I'm not gonna say no titles or nothing like that because I'm not. I know people. I'm not saying you will, but people stealing my idea. I I can't do that. I know. I would. I would. I would hate myself. Uh, <laughs> so I. Um, yeah, there, there's something I want to do in regards to that because I've. But, um, but, um, I've uh, oh my god, I back my background's in ballroom, so um, I, I want to like incorporate something that um, that has dancing, but not like the, in the heights is a musical, and no, I'm not just musical, I you know, I I I know, I mean, I didn't know I liked musicals since high school, I, like, I liked like high school musical was the first musical like I liked what I grew up to, you know, and the high school musical, then you got um. West Side Story. West Side Story was amazing. Um, that's the, the one. The that's the one. West Side Story. Oh, West Side Story. That's oh. the one. That's the one I was trying to think today. There you go. Well, I thought it was. I thought it was something else. I thought you missed like the something. What was it? Miami? Miami? Something? I don't know. I don't know. There was another film in the nineties. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so West Side Story was one wonderful in the heights. Musical, but I my idea wouldn't be a musical; it'd be a straight up film, uh, and, and highlighting the dances from salsa, to bachata, to tango, to cha cha, to you know, to, you know, doing something like that. Um, I haven't come across writing yet because it's like I'm still thinking. I mean, I already know what's it going to be called, but it's just like I'm just still thinking, thinking on what's how it's going to be, how it be like sexy to to the point, like it all makes sense. Um, so, um, but, you know, even with Latinos and dancing, I mean, I, there should be more movies that encourages dancing. Um, not like, not like step up, step like I, the first two was cool, but after that, I was like, I, I didn't, I didn't care for it. Um, what another good dancing movie, you can say feel the noise, feel the noise was, it was cool. It, it, it make you feel like you're from, like if you're from the hood, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate that one. Um, uh, 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 stomp the yard was hella cool. Um, um, what you call it? Um, damn, there's another one with Omarion. Oh, you um, got served. Yeah. You got served. You got served was, was, was pretty cool. So it's like, you know, in the realm of that, but with, but with more Latin music and with Latinos too. So, um yeah so i that's that's an idea i had but that's i don't know i don't know when i'll start that but like i said it's just it's more of in the thought process that i can't like i have to really like sit down and just like think like how can i do this how can i make this happen because i don't want to direct it i just want to write it write the play and write the screenplay and stuff so i mean it's just a lot of factors that go in it um but 
Yeah, I mean, I'm eventually I'll watch the Knights. I mean, um, I know, like I said, they're, they're, they're killing it. Uh, like, you know, a lot of great reviews and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I and it's crazy. Uh, I, Anthony Ramos, what I heard, it was that him, he, uh, he got, he got uh, denied a role, maybe, and he got denied something. I, I don't know if it was like the original. I think oh, it was in the Heights, the play. I think it was a, a play version of it, and they denied him. Like he wasn't, he didn't get a role, nothing. Mm. And then now his success, being in the film, you know, as a, as a lead actor, was you know, wow, you know, incredible because. Look what happened, and then now he's a lead actor in the film, directed by uh, uh, Lean Manuel Miranda, you know. Um, and then so you know, it was, his his story is incredible too. He, uh, was he, I think he's what Puerto Rican, New Yorker. I think he's what twenty nine or thirty. Was he thirty one? I don't know. He's the, maybe he's in. His, he's twenty nine, thirty one. I don't know, but uh, his story his story is concerning cool you know so yeah i mean i don't know when i'll see it but uh it's on my list I, there's so many movies i gotta watch man i have a list on what i need to watch and what i gotta watch stuff like that so but like but back to you what you said you know latinos being here representing you know we, we all we we need to you know we need we need to get to work you know uh, obviously i'm not saying we're not working at all but uh, we just need that one chance all we need is one chance to 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 get that and um you know, uh, I, for me, like how, how I am, I feel like I'm representing the people that don't have that dream, can follow the dream. I feel like I'm representing the, my hood. Uh, I feel like I'm representing, you know, Vegas in a way, because like uh, doing with people that knew me um, or been around me, they, they're like, damn, they're like, like they like Steve is just really rep like representing us because we have a voice. I'm like you're damn right. You got a voice, man. It's it's not like you like it's not like you never did, you know. And and I had so many haters back then too. It's it was un, it was unbelievable. But I mean that that I mean you're gonna have you're gonna have haters with any amount of success you have. So I mean if if you have it, that means you're doing something right. If you don't have it, that means you're still doing something right. Because I mean. I mean, it'll be nice to have not have that because it's like you don't have to deal with the drama. But you know, it, it always it always happens. It's not like you can't avoid it. So there's that. That's true, man. And for those who don't know, my boy Steve was on the billboards. I don't know if y'all saw that, but <laughs> I was driving by and I was like, "Damn, my boy's making moves headlights." You know what I'm saying? So when I saw him for the first time, first first time, I couldn't believe it was Steve. I was like. He's actually here. So when I saw him in real life, I ain't gonna lie, guys. I'm sure I'm the same height as Kevin Hart. When I saw Steve, I had to stretch my neck. I was like, dang, he's tall. And I was like, man, this guy seemed cool as heck. I was like, yo, what's up, Steve? You know, it's an honor to meet you. I'm like, bro, it's me, Yaakov David from the Outlet to Reality. I'm like, I don't know if you remember, like, I hit you up, and he's like, yeah, 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 I remember, man. He's like, come on, let's go dance. Let's go get some, you know, let's go have fun, man. This a lot of cute girls. I was like, I ain't going to lie. You know, my, <laughs> eyes, my eyes open, so, you know, I had to see, you know. God gave me vision, so I, I was able to see straight. But, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, it, it was really cool, man. Nice experience to meet you. And uh, I, I want to ask you, man, one of my last questions I want to ask you is, any upcoming projects that's that that's gonna happen for you, brother, that we should be aware of that uh you're looking forward to. Any project I'm looking forward to? I mean, I'm looking forward to all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh well, um, there's one I worked uh, uh I was in a film with Danny Trejo. Um, but I, I hopefully, I mean, I haven't had, I haven't heard any word yet, but um, hopefully it comes out later this year. I, I heard it was coming later this year, but I don't know. That's something I really look forward to. I feel like that was like a really great performance on my part when I was in that film. Cause it was like, it was just unbelievable feeling and just being around with the other LA talent with, they had a lot of 
big credits and stuff like that. So it was really incredible for me. So I mean, I'm, I'm and the name of the fi- name of the film was called Am- American Sicario, you know, based on a true story. Um, so it was just, you know, that, 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 that was, that was, it was really cool. That was really cool. Um, and Susie was in, Susie was in that one too. And we were, me and her were the only talent, the only biggest talent that like, um, or, or the only talent that I didn't live in LA that got selected to be in the film, both had speaking, speaking parts and stuff like that, both supporting roles. And it was, it was fantastic. That means we were, we were doing something until 2020 was for film wise. It was, it was an incredible year. We helped me with me and her. We we both grew making the film, making my films, a couple of films that I directed, um, Butch, which both are in festivals right now, which one of both of them won awards. She won best, best actress in both, which was incredible. And I was very happy. I'm like, Oh, Oh damn. Like, I won an award, wow! And it was best for actress. I'm like, I'm, I'm even happier because it's, I'm not even. A, I'm not only I won an award, she won an award for this film, and it's, and it's, wow! I didn't even, I hell, I didn't even want to put it in the festival because I thought it was just too short. But I mean, there's people that really want to watch really short shorts like that. So you know, it was great to for for her to win that. Um, uh, but let's see. Um, I, I got a, I got a couple things. I got a cu- couple things I'm working on. Uh, a couple things I'm writing too. Um, um, the 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 short the short short that Susie won Best Actress. Um, I'm I'm I now I'm beginning to in pre production to write the excuse me the the full length feature of them. Um, I feel like it's time to write that one. And since I'm writing it, um, there will be no hiccups, uh, no distractions. I know I can get that done. Um, I, I set myself myself a goal before I, by October I can get that done. I, I it shouldn't take me that long, but since I know the story, I, I have it in my phone, like the outlines of what I got to do. You know, um, the stuff this the stuff can work. Um. And hopefully that can give you my three my my three million dollar check or something. I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Uh, um, yeah, I, I that's why I got a couple. Yeah, I got a couple going on. I got a couple going on. I'll be filming later on this month. Filming in August. Um, let's see what else. What else am I doing? Yeah, just those two. Yeah, those couple things, and then I'm writing those. Two. I'm also collaborating with another filmmaker to write another thing. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, hopefully, we can get pre production by the end of the year. And so by 2022, we can get start to film and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what it is. I'm I'm always working, man. Even I I, I don't go to sleep probably till like I don't know. One o'clock, two o'clock, because I'm I'm always I'm always here studying or wa- watching film. I because I I mean I, I have an audition Thursday, so I, I make sure that I have everything down. Like I checked every box that I, I I know that I got it, and then like you know just just keep going over. over and, when I, and then when I sleep on it, when I wake up, it's like okay, the new information comes to me and stuff like that, and. Uh, you know, um, just 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 doing that. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, that's I'm I'm, all, I'm I'm busy, man. I'm always busy, but I mean, that doesn't mean I don't know how to have a good time. Doesn't mean I can't do what I got um, any fun stuff I got to do. But uh, I, I but I do I do know for me how I go by his work first, play later. My work is important to me. I I, I can I can't do anything else until my work is done for the day. And when my work is done for the day, then I see what else I want to do. Um, but until this gets done, I'm not going anywhere. And, uh, and what I love about this craft is that there's so much work. There's so much work to do that it's very, I, I get very, like, I get excited because there's so much work to do because like, I can never get bored and I'm never bored with this because there's, like I said, there's so much more to do. 
And uh, I'm just trying to uh, make sure that, um, you know, um, best as possible. I mean, I'm only 26. Damn. And like, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I made so many goals, like, from when I was 19 to I see myself 10 years and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, and it's crazy. You're from Chicago. I love, I love Chicago. I love Chicago very much. Uh, I have a lot of great memories in Chicago. Um, um, I, uh, fuck, I, I, I tried to, I was, I was talking to a girl one time. I was talking to this girl. I won't say this girl. She's, she's, she's really cool. But uh, I was, uh, I was uh, talking to someone at the time and she lived in Chicago and uh, I tried to tell her like, Hey, there's like this acting thing. Go there. Help me out. Learn, let's see what you can t- try to find out what you will try to find out something. Like, I'm gonna give you questions to ask them so you can tell me what they say and whatever. But uh, but, but I think it costs like 110 bucks to get them. Ah, get, nah, never mind. Don't do it. No, do it. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. So, uh, but yeah, no, Chicago was a great experience. Um, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, just just to keep just to I'm just keep just keeping going and just how yeah, I met a lot of people. Like a lot of famous people, um, like uh, for example, uh, Miami last year before the pandemic, I met a I met a Latin director. His name was Ch- Jesse Torero, and I met him at Blue. I'm in Miami one day, and uh, I'm in I'm inside a club, and he's there, and I'm like, oh, sh- I'm good. I'm about to leave, and then I he the DJ Low shout out Jesse Torero, what's up, homie, or whatever. So I'm like, oh shit, he's here. Okay, well. Let me go up there. Let me go talk to him. And then I see him, and then like, hey, hey, just got, like I take a picture with you, and like, yeah, sure. And then we had like a good, uh, we had a good chat for like maybe a good five minutes. And then, um, uh, you know, great advice from him was just, to, to, bro, like you said, bro, just keep going, just keep going. And then, uh, you, you, like uh, some people won't appreciate that, but for me, it's like I know what that meant. I knew what that meant, and I appreciated that because that's what the name of the game is: is to keep going. Because no matter like you say on the, like me and the billboard, the commercial, and it's great. Trust me, it's a wonderful thing. It's who can say who can say they've been on a billboard? Not 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 hardly anybody because right. it's a rare thing to do. But for me, it's like listen, that's great. I I'm very appreciative, very grateful, and thankful. But now, like I said, there's more fish to fry. Now, let's go fry bigger fish. I need to do this stuff. And um, I, I'm glad the, the success I've been having. I, I, I'm not, I'm nobody yet. I'm nobody. I'm not, I haven't made it yet. No, I, 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 I'll know when I made it. I haven't made it yet. And uh, there's still much more work to do. I, I keep myself very hardworking and stuff like that. And I, listen, I see a lot for myself, and uh, I, I don't want to say it now. I don't want to say it now. I'll, I'll keep some stuff to myself, but like, there's a lot of stuff that I see, and that I know. I I know I'm supposed to be here. I know I'm supposed to be doing this. Uh, I went to New York back in 2018, and uh, that was the moment that this is true. This is this is it. Like. When they say, like in New York, say if you can make it to New York, you can make it anywhere. And the crazy thing about this, I, I went to New York for acting because I, I had a I, my manager got me a role. So I'm like, oh great, okay, okay. And I'm here in New York, and that, that this was my calling card. It was like, yeah. And ever since coming back from New York, yeah, and I haven't been in New York since. Um, it was. Everything has been different. The, 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 there was magic from New York, and I, I, I got like, man, there's, my life has changed for the better. You know, the second half of twenty eight, the second half of twenty eighteen, from let's say from on, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't say August on. So now August from twenty eighteen till now, it's been my mind boggling. It's been so amazing because from how I was in August. To September, October, to going to New York, getting cast in a pilot which didn't get picked up and which failed. To going to New York, having that experience, 
And then 20, uh, tw- um, yeah, the rest of 2019, ending it off strong, going to 2020, starting a strong filming, and then the pandemic, but still making it work to still film, create my own content, add writing, writing credits to my name, and just, you know, get better. It was... It's just, it's just amazing that I just can't really describe. Um, so I knew the, 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 that stuff would be just incredible. And I, and I said for this year, this year is going to be a breakthrough year. Like I'm, I'm breaking through this year. I, I, I stepped my game up last year. I mean, I always got to step up my game, but last year was something. If you thought last year was something, you wait till this year. And I was like, this is a, a breakthrough year. The first half, so first half has been wonderful. I loved the first half. Now it's about the second half, how I can close this and I, how I can, you know, I, there's clo- roles I've been so close. I'm like, okay. I mean, I, it gets frustrating because, you know, you put your heart and soul in these roles and it's like, you know, but it's not in your control when you submit it. It's all to, all, it's all to casting. Um, but you know, I I I I I never give up. I, I don't. I'm never insecure. I don't get down myself. Like, damn, I should give up. I I never ha- I never have those doubts. Never have those thoughts about giving up. That doesn't even enter my mind, um, because I know I'm supposed to be here. I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I know there's the purpose right there, and the purpose is still strong. I I I believe myself. That's why I take myself over anybody. Uh, am I am I a competitive guy? I you're damn right I am. You're damn right. Um, I'm I'm not. This isn't this isn't a game to me. But at the same time, I have fun with this. This is so much fun. But I I know that like you have to be competitive in this because you can't have people run, run over you. And you know I, I I'm as much as I am encouraging other actors that I meet, I encourage them and like hey you got this and stuff. But if we're going to the same role, like listen. Have, break a leg. You better you you better raise up your game because when you raise up your game, my game will even will 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 top yours. Raise the bar so that the pressure's on me, and because I love the pressure, so I want it. So um, so it's just that. So um, uh, so yeah, being competitive and all that stuff, and um. It's just uh, like I said. It's just been it's just been amazing. That's why I said just th- this year is going to be like a it, it will be a breakthrough. I don't know which which month which month that's going to be. Damn, Steve, this is it. This is the role. This is it. Like you got your three million dollar check, whatever. I mean, I I I just feel it. It's, it's, it's still this year. I still believe it. And I don't mean I don't know what happens in twenty two. I'm not looking that far ahead because. I'm still in 21 and 21 has been a great year so far. Um, uh, but, you know, I just don't have doubts. I, I, I know that I will be successful in this. I know if anything, they might say bad who bad bunny who? No, we're looking at Steve. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no, but I feel like, you know, people, you know, my name will be out there. Um, it, it's 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 going to be just a matter of when. It's going to be a matter of time. That's it. As long as I just keep working hard, um, and uh, yeah, just keep going while I'm at it. People take breaks. I don't know why, and because uh, because if you take breaks in this industry, you will be left behind so far that it will take you a while to catch up. And you're, you have to, your, your skills have to be very sharp because if it's, if it's rusty, then man, that's going to be, that's going to be horrible. That's why I don't take any months off, any days off every day. Every day is on acting to make sure I'm, I'm better than where I was the day before and stuff. Like that. And don't get me wrong. I'm a regular person. Um, even with this pandemic, it taught me more likes to remind me that I am a regular person and I'm a regular person first and actor second, you know, that's why I like, if I, if, when I date, when I date somebody, you know, I, I, I like to date an outsider because 
it reminds me that I'm a, that I'm a regular person. But also, I, I, mean, I don't want to sleep my way to the top because it's not, that's not fair. And I, I'm hell. I'm in, I'm in class. I'm hearing that. Um, was one film. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the film, but uh, someone got a role because uh, I think it was the produce. I think it was dating the producer, the producer's wife, or something about that. And I, I'm just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Sorry to cuss, but sorry, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I see not like stuff like that makes me completely mad. It's like you have people busting their ass trying to get these roles, big or small. And it's like favoritism. You got to play to like the wife and stuff like that. Like, it's just like, that's, that's still not fair. But then again, it's, I, I get it. It's about who, you know, I, I get it in acting. It's about who, you know, but like there's these people that, live and die by this they put like this is their life blood sweat and tears to this and uh and uh just just with this you know it just it just gets me mad but that's why you know i i don't i don't take anything personal like i i i i don't get my hopes up because i i've heard it all so but i i just know that i can only control what i can control and it's the room the room is i the room is here to see me they're the customers are here to see me to give them a badass performance, they're here to see me. They're in, if anything, you're they're on my side. They're my friends. They're they're just trying to see me. I'm like, here, you want a show? Here's a show. I'll give you a show. And uh, if I get it or not, I just know if I gave it 110 percent that I have, there's no regrets. There's no regrets. I don't in my in in my 20s so far, I don't regret anything. I I live with all the choices I made. Everything has been wonderful. Um, you know, lucky for me, I have no kids or anything, so it's <laughs> been so it's so it's great because I I can I, I don't live the stress of that. I'm not saying babies or kids are stressed, but then again, I mean, I hear all the time. You know, it just depends who you are. But you know, I, having this this great fortune to not you know have any setbacks or holdbacks, it, it's been it's been completely amazing. Um, and wait, so, uh, wait, brother, can I, can I say something real quick? Go ahead, go ahead. Um, the part, uh, to bring back, you were saying how people sleep their way to the top, right? When that I caught my eye, I, I wanted to add something, what you were saying. It's sad. I see that a lot in companies in even the, the acting world, like you just mentioned, okay. And it's like you said, it's not fair because you're cheating your way to the top. You didn't really earn it. You kind of you you did something else that else you could do. But, you know, some people work hard and I, it, it makes me think a little bit of the problem with when you sleep your way to the top. Everybody knows your business after that happens. You will always be known the person that slept with that person to be where you are. And it's sad that your reputation is there forever. Like, that's why I don't, I highly don't recommend it. And, you know what I'm saying? and here's my thing too, man. And, and this is crazy. I, I want to, I'm going to pick at your brain real quick. Cause I, I, I like how you're thinking, man. I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm having this interview. So how do you feel now with people being big from TikTok, right? And they're doing acting, but they've never had an audition They've never had an agent viral. Like, how does that make you feel? Do you feel like it's, I mean, it is changing the industry. Do you feel like it's, it's not, like, does it go back again what we were saying? Like, is it unfair? That's what I'm trying to say to you. Well, I'll say this. There, I, I was on Clubhouse, like, I don't know, a couple months ago. There was a guy that from TikTok, he made, like, viral videos or whatever. Just because you make viral videos, or just or or you got viral, doesn't mean you know how to act. Doesn't mean you understand the craft. There's levels to this and stuff like that. And social media, it's not everything. It's not. It doesn't tell me if you can act. Of course, when you're on, when you're live, when you're natural, of course. But 
Let's let's see you get on a professional camera. Let's see you get on set. Let's see you take classes. Let's see you retain this information. Let's see you go to an audition. Let's see you do all of this. You know, it's not it's not like TikTok. You know, you can in TikTok. How many times you you're allowed to fuck up or you're allowed to do it over again? You're or to redo the video again? Like a, you you're allowed to do the shitload of times. An audition, you can't. Ha- There's no shitload of times. It's one. It's your one and done. Once or twice. If you're lucky, three. If you're lucky. And if they see something that they really like, they'll go for a three. It's either one or two. That's it. You don't get a shitload of times like you do on TikTok. So people they the mess up, they take advantage of the mess up. Okay, cool. But be live with with casting. Like self tapes, you you can do you can do that. I mean, self tapes. I mean, it could be on like a ninth take or whatever. But at least like you, you're getting somewhere with that. But like, let's say you're live in person. Like people will be get shot. Like I forgot my lines. <laughs> you know, stuff like that is like you know it's these TikTok stars. I mean, I don't even know any TikTok stars to be honest. Cause I don't I don't have that stuff. I'm. Uh, you know, have I met a, like a YouTuber to, uh, that became a successful actor? No, I don't know anybody because I just like I think they just know how hard it is. You know, I think like they, 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 they're, they're I've, how I'm doing it for storytelling. There's just meaning behind it for them. I, I think they just want the fame. Yeah, and like I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Just man, that irks me so much because it's like. You're trying to get this to be famous. Well, um, well, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't, I just don't like that because it's like you're just doing this to get famous, and that's why you like, you know. I, I understand you're a musician. When you're a musician, you get your one hand wonder, you get your millions, and you bank on it. Cool, whatever. But TikTok, YouTube. I mean, I, I would, I would tell them just to stick with what you're good at. If you're gonna try to branch out to acting, I mean, you got to really. Be one hundred and ten percent committed, and don't don't shortcut anything because it just does not work like that. And uh, I mean, how I I started, I mean, I I did some YouTube stuff before, but then I transitioned to, I mean, I was transitioned to acting, but it was like it was always there. I mean, doing my films and then doing YouTube videos. What I what I did like the YouTube videos helped a lot, and even I could see stuff with the YouTube videos. Like I would open it up again, but not. Like not now. It was more like I would try to get like sell it to like MTV. Like, hey, let's do something like this—a reality show. You know, let's do let's do something like this. And uh, I did like social experiments and pranks videos on, on in Vegas. And like, uh, you know, my channel is called Wolfpack TM. And you know, I I was reminiscing about a video, a couple of videos actually. Uh, one in February, uh, I think, was it Valentine's Day or was it maybe a little bit after that? I don't know. I think maybe it was on Valentine's Day. I was reminiscing a video and like uh, I put it on my story on IG and oh my God, the amount of laughs that I got. Like this video was, this video was what? I've made this 2016. This video was, it was five years old and getting that reaction, like it's funnier now than it was when it, when it came out. And to have that type of reaction was hilarious because it was just, it was a Valentine's Day social experiment, and there was just one lady and she doesn't that, people don't know that they're being filmed, and then I, I fuck with them hey uh, hey I'm I'm fucking with you there's a there's a camera right there that's filming you like, oh my god you know shit like that but there's this one lady she didn't even know if she was being filmed I didn't even tell her either so I'm like hey I, I just wanted to give you a kiss and it was like a, a val- it was a Hershey's kiss. And she thought something else. Like, you were like, yeah, I just want to give you a kiss. You just want to give you a kiss for good luck. And like, where are your friends at? Where are your friends? I'm like, I, it's just, uh, fuck, my, my friends ain't here. It's just me. And so like, uh, you know, she was, I don't know, putting chapstick or whatever. And she was like putting her arms around me. And we were just, <laughs> we're just making out on, 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 on video. <laughs> it's like making out like you hear it and stuff like that and uh <laughs> and this is me this is me at 20 years old and i'm i'm lying to people like i'm 23 or whatever me at wow. 20 years old making out with like ladies like 32 33 and stuff like that and i i'm just lying to people because i because i they're in front of uh they're by marquee nightclub at cosmo 
And um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm like, why? Like, why aren't you just from our key? Ah, because uh, no, no, I'm not feeling it. But in reality, I'm not old enough <laughs> yet because the, I, I was like, I need one more month. Then I turned 21. And then, but even, but that, that was a great experiment. I'm making out with women. Hell, I had like a, a birthday, birthday sex in Vegas video, a social experiment. I'm, I'm making out with a couple girls. I mean, there's times I make out with girls and stuff, but, and this is all, this is all on camera. Hell, I showed a cast of my, a casting director uh, who I performed for, uh, she loves comedy. And, uh, I know, I had her on Instagram. I DM'd her, like, listen, I know you about love comedy, but what about social experiments? Like, and, like she's like, hmm, social experiments. Like, tell me more. You know, yeah, social experiments. And, and I, I showed her a video or whatever. And I was like, this is live. This is raw. This is uncensored this is everything you and this is me live talking there's no script or no this is this is real people real reactions and i showed her like one i'm this is first friday and i'm pretending to be a security cop a security guard or whatever have my glasses i have my u- uniform with a tie with my name it says steve but it was like a circuit my by badge from circus circus so there was that, and uh, like I'm going around, like, hey, you, hey, uh, hey, I'm sorry, you can't kiss here. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Uh, are you, are you, are you, uh, are you allowed to drink? Or are you, uh, can I see your ID and shit like that? Like, I have Metro right here and whatever. It was like the one of the funniest shit. And uh, I showed her that, and she, she laughed her, she, she laughed her ass off. Like she said, she enjoyed it. And I was like, great, great, great. And I'm gonna see, and I'm gonna see her soon. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see her soon, actually, too. So. Uh, just, uh, you know, show that side and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's, I, I would, I would return to that again, but I, I want to have someone else like pick that up. Like, you know, I go to MTV, like, Hey, I, I have this idea. Let's, let's go, let's go do something like, like, let, like, you know, Wilmer Valderrama, he did like, he's on NCIS, but did your mama back in the day. The OGs, if you know, you know, your mama and stuff like that, which was on MTV, like, like, all right, he did that. And uh, let me let me do this. You know, this, this this stuff is so badass and not just do it in Vegas. Let me do it in every other city. And I, and I could just, you know, go and stuff like that. And, you know, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny as shit. Um, so but even with that, you know, I doing the film and TV and then doing the YouTube and, you know, film and TV again. It was just, you know, it, it was a great it's also great practice. You know, you being in camera re- live and stuff like that. That's why I don't. I don't get, you know, I don't get scared or nervous. If anything, the camera's my best friend. Um, you know, I, you know, it, it, it's been, it's been fun. So that's why it's like, I, these TikTok people don't phase me because do they have talent? Maybe they do, but I act in such, such a different game. I, 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 I just, I just don't, I just don't know. But Vi- like, viral doesn't doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, you, you like, you knew how to do a unlimited hello 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 takes and stuff like that. But um, you know, I mean, what I be, I, I, I've been part of a TikTok video before. I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do one, I mean, or I'll do another one. But it's like there. The people that earn their stuff, like they're auditioning and stuff like that, they're busting their ass, studying and stuff like that. Those are the people that should be noticed, not not them. But then again, I don't. I, people I talk to, they don't look at social media like, oh, you gotta have a big presence to social media and stuff like that. That shouldn't even. That shouldn't even matter. Mm-hmm. That's really shouldn't even matter. Mm-hmm. If anything, acting should lead to your numbers, go, your social media numbers going up, not. Acting, your acting numbers should make this film go up. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Should not work like that. I don't. I don't like that. Yeah. You know. So I mean, that's that's that. That's good, brother. Well, let me wrap it up real quick, brother. Um, this is the outlet to reality. The hold is podcast in Vegas and Chicago. Uh, thank you guys for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Choo choo. And uh, y'all know where to find me. Yeah. Instagram, take um, the outlet to reality. 
Uh, you also can find me on YouTube and Spotify. And don't forget my TikTok as well is at Yakov28. And my Snapchat is at on Pass It. And Brother Steve, where can our fans find you? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Real Steve Delgado. Like, inst- so I'll repeat it again. So you can find me on Instagram at Real Steve Delgado. On um, Twitter at Real Stevie D, Stevie S T E V I E E D. So there's two E's on that. Um, and Facebook, uh, Facebook.com slash Real Steve Delgado. Um, that's that's where you can find me. And also got my website too. So, uh, if you want to check out one of my content of acting, uh, uh, www.steve-delgado.com. Um, I've yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's where pretty much you can find me. So perfect, perfect. Thank you. Peace.